The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever loves me will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our dwelling with him. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words. Yet the word you hear is not mine, but that of the Father who sent me. I have told you this while I am with you, the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have told you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give it to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled or afraid. You have heard me tell you, I am going away and will come back to you. If you loved me, you would rejoice that I am going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you this before it happens, so that when it happens, you may believe. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, I've just passed another milestone in my fatherly life. My oldest son just turned 21 on May 8th. And I know a lot of dads like to take their kids out for a drink when that happens, and I'm planning on doing that. Haven't had a chance yet. He was at college and is back, but uh, haven't done that quite yet. But it reminded me that uh, uh, I have friends from Costa Rica, and instead of age 21 when you can drink, it's actually age 18 there. And this friend was telling me that it's a little bit disconcerting. And also, kids live with their parents all the way until they're married in Costa Rica. And he told me it's a little disconcerting to, to one day walk into your house and your, your son comes in the door, walks right by you, opens up the fridge, and grabs an adult be beverage right in front of you. And then it's yours. It belongs to yours, he said. They just come and grab it. Um, so that's a milestone for me, uh, to see my son turn 21. And it reminds me that we see in our society that at certain point, things that were illegal all of a sudden become legal. You reach a certain predetermined age of maturity, and then you get to enjoy certain gifts. And the gifts that we get to use or enjoy are the type that are potentially dangerous to ourselves and to others, like driving or alcohol. And it takes a certain maturity to use these types of gifts well, right? So then society tries to limit the potential damage from immature use of these gifts. And for example, then sets the drinking age at 21 and the driving age at 16. And I suppose if our kids matured, suddenly matured a lot sooner, we would lower those ages and allow them those gifts earlier, perhaps. But understanding this helps us to understand the first reading today. The apostles preach to the Gentiles, to non-Jews, and then everyone asks, now that these folks are Christians, should we make them now follow all the rules and regulations of the Jews? Which begs the question, what purpose did all these rules and regulations serve? And we know that the Apostle Paul elsewhere answers that they were meant to be like a temporary guardian or a chaperone to keep the immature Jews on the straight and narrow so that they would flourish and not harm themselves. Paul uses the analogy of a chaperone 
that Jewish parents used with their children. In fact, chaperones, I don't know what the word was, father might know the word, but they would accompany their kids. They'd pay them to accompany their kids, kids to school, make sure they crossed the street in the right way, didn't get hurt, would help them with homework, would be just around to kind of protect them and pre prevent them especially from doing something immature, I suppose. And Paul uses this analogy to describe the purpose of the law. And Paul acknowledges that just as the chaperone system, just as that couldn't really fix the problem of the kid's immaturity, all the Jewish laws and religious regulations couldn't make Jews spiritually mature. It couldn't fix the problem of sin and bad decisions. It just tried to limit the damage and then pointed you in the right direction. Just as, like, the age of 21 doesn't magically make someone responsible drinker all of a sudden. An external law, something on the outside, doesn't make you mature on the inside. But when Christ came, all that changed. And the kid guardian or the chaperone i.e. the Jewish law, he's told that his services are no longer needed. And in a, in a sense, it's like no more drinking age, no more threshold for driving, no more speed limits, no more burdensome laws on exact, exactly what you could do and couldn't do on the Sabbath. Because what the Jews now had and what we now have it's not the freedom to do anything we want or to disobey any law that God gives. But now we have something at work inside of us that can fix our immaturity problem. And in a sense, God deposits something inside of us that if we cooperate with it, will allow us to leave our immature ways. It will heal us. It will transform us. It will make us into new people, mature people making mature decisions. In a word, it will make us like God. And this something that I was refer am referring to is something that was deposited in us at our baptisms. And this something was fanned into flame at our own confirmations. And we Christians call it the Holy Spirit. And this coming Tuesday, many young people from our parish will be confirmed. And they will be told to rely on the great gift of the Holy Spirit inside of them to guide them to maturity and mission within the church. And let's all pray that this happens this coming Tuesday. Because it is the Spirit inside of us that brings us true freedom, as the scriptures say. It is the spirit inside of us, and if we cooperate, it points us to the right choices that will help us love God and love our neighbor. This is really the point of all legislation and all law. So if one of our confirmants is walking alone on a deserted country road and finds a wallet with a thousand dollars in it, and they know that there's no security cameras around, they won't necessarily need a law to tell them what to do with it. And when I am in my own garage trying to fix my car using YouTube videos, I don't need a state law to tell me not to use foul language. <laughs> None of you have ever done that. <laughs> And I don't need a federal law to force me to care for my parents as they get older. Or I don't need a law to tell me I should help my neighbor out when his basement floods. And I don't need a law, if I was on the Titanic, I wouldn't need a crew member. The Titanic was sinking, I wouldn't need a crew, crew member to come up to me and tell me that to allow the women and the children to go first. The spirit inside of me, not an outside law, would urge me to follow the example, the simple command of Jesus, 
to lay down my life for my friends. And I, we don't need complex laws to specify what I shouldn't do, what we should, should and shouldn't do on Sunday, on the Sabbath, right? Because something would well up inside of us and want to go to the Eucharist, would want to honor God on the Sabbath. And what I'm talking about is another part of the good news. Besides the good news that there is eternal life beyond death, besides the good news that God has forgiven and will continue to forgive all of our sins, besides the good news that God is actually interested in us and loves us with a deep love, besides all that, now we have the good news that we have something inside of us that will assist us to do the right things that will make us happy and will lead us to God. So in today's first reading, the apostles had to decide just how many Jewish rules and regulations that they were going to require of the new Gentile converts. Should it be 50? Should it be 150? And in the end, they settle on three. Why? Because the Gentiles had received the same Holy Spirit inside of them that the Jewish folks had received. And the whole point of all Jewish laws and regulations was to prepare them and form them into a people and keep them safe until the time that God would write the law on their hearts, until the time that they reached maturity and would instinctively, from within, follow God's ways and be happy. Now, I'm not saying that we Christians don't need laws or we don't need to follow laws. We're realists. We know that we are all works in progress and that God doesn't simply wave a magic wand and allow us to all of a sudden easily follow his ways. And we welcome and need church laws to point us in the right direction. And we also welcome and obey civil laws, provided they do not contradict God's laws. And we live in societies with other works in progress. And we desperately need civil laws to keep our societies together and healthy while respecting their freedom. And there will always be a perpetual give and take with rulemaking and laws. Example is in a couple months, you won't be able to, it'll be illegal to hold on to your cell phone while you're driving a car. Just think of that. Are you all ready? <laughs> so we live, brothers and sisters, in a very rich season of the church where we turn our attention to the Holy Spirit, whose temple we are. The Holy Spirit resides in us. And we ask the Holy Spirit to continue, to continue writing the law of God on our hearts inside so that we may live as mature sons and daughters and be happy. And we ask the Holy Spirit to guide us through the process of becoming more like our Father in heaven. Which gets me back to that drink that I was talking to you about that I'm looking forward to with my son. Fathers like me smile really, really big when our sons and our daughters grow up and mature and make the right decisions, not because we force them to, because of something that's within them, something inside of them. This is one of the greatest pleasures in life. And I look forward to having a drink soon with my son, Stephen, to mark his 21st birthday. And I hope and pray that he and all of us allow God to write his laws upon our hearts.